Catholics love idolatry, or at least that's what I see in my comments section all the time. The question is, is this facts or false witness against thy neighbor? The answer might shock you. Let's actually take a look here. In the Ten Commandments, God says to Moses, you shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Well, on its face, it seems like that settles it. It seems that the Catholics are wrong, the comment people are right, my priesthood is a sham. Or is it? See, I think we sometimes fall into the trap of reading scripture so narrowly that we miss the broader context and the deeper meaning of what is actually being said. For example, in this case, God forbids the creation of graven images of anything in heaven above or earth beneath or the water under the earth. But then only five chapters later, God is telling Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant and to hammer together golden statues of cherubim, that is, angels, on top of the Ark. And then if we jump to Numbers 21, Moses is once again taking instruction from God to slap up a bronze serpent to hold before the gaze of the people to save them from the venomous bites of the snakes. So either God is making commandments and breaking them himself, or there might be a deeper meaning to the commandment than just the mere creation of images. I admit idolatry is real and it is very serious as a sin. In the words of the church itself in the catechism in article 2113, it says, idolatry consists in divinizing that which is not God. Man commits idolatry whenever he honors and reveres a creature in place of God, whether this be gods or demons, for example, Satanism, power, pleasure, race, ancestors, the state, money, power, material possessions, TikTok fame, whatever it happens to be. Placing anything before and above God is idolatry. Or in the words of Jesus himself, you cannot serve both God and and Memon. To understand why Catholic and Orthodox Christians are so taken by images, icons, paintings, statues, crucifixes, stained glass windows, etc., you have to understand this important distinction between the Greek slash Latin word latria, meaning the worship due to God alone, and dulia, the honor which is offered to saints and other holy things. See, it turns out when you belong to a church that traces its roots back to Jesus and the apostles themselves, these kind of theological debates have already taken place. It's not as if Catholics just read the Ten Commandments and thought, nope, that's not going to work for us, just ignore it. The truth is that these subjects were taken extremely seriously and hotly debated by leaders and bishops in the early centuries of the church. In this particular case, in the 8th century, the Emperor Leo III and Constantine V both read this commandment in Exodus literally, and they went about ordering the destruction of holy images all throughout the empire. This was called iconoclasm. This iconoclastic controversy was addressed in the Second Council of Nicaea in the year 787 AD, where in response to this destruction, it was declared by the council, we define that the holy icons, whether in color, mosaic, or some other material, should be exhibited in the holy churches of God, on the sacred vessels and liturgical vestments, on the walls and in the homes and in all public places. For the more they are contemplated, the more they move people to fervent memory and desire for those who are depicted in them. Or in the words of St. Basil from a few decades earlier, he said, the honor given to the image passes over to its prototype. In other words, the honor is actually directed not at the image itself, but that which the image depicts. As Christians, we recognize that the true worship owed to God can be made through the veneration of images precisely because of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, God was completely transcendent, and so he could not be captured in any image or form. But ever since the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, we can gaze upon the face of God in Jesus Christ and also on those he has brought into friendship with himself by his grace. I think St. John of Damascus summed it up well in the 8th century when he said, I do not worship matter, I worship the God of matter, who became matter for my sake and deigned to inhabit matter, who worked out my salvation through matter. Never will I cease honoring the matter which wrought my salvation.
Let me finish now with a simple analogy which I think will bring it all together. Family photos. I bet everyone watching this at least has some family photos or photos of loved ones. Now I ask you the question, does the possession or the placement of those photos in prominent places around the home detract in any way from the love that you have for the people depicted in those photos? I don't think so. You keep photos of your loved ones in prominent places, not because you love the material, the matter, the paper on which they're printed, or think it is literally your loved one hanging on the wall of your house. It's because they remind you, they point you to the memory of those people whom you love so dearly. Well, it's the same for us as Catholics. When we venerate images or statues, it has nothing to do with the material itself, but they serve as reminders of the love that we have for Christ himself and also for those whose lives and virtues reflected the love of Jesus. In fact, I would go as far as saying that my Protestant friends already understand this concept in the veneration that they show for the Holy Scriptures. For example, there's no way in the world that a faithful Protestant will use the Holy Scriptures as something profane like a coffee coaster. Why? Because they revere the Holy Word of God. But in their reverence for the Scripture, we couldn't say that they're worshipping the paper or the ink or the binding of the book itself. They are merely showing honour for the Word of God, which is the light of the world, printed on its pages. So in short, no, Catholics don't love idolatry. We just know what it actually means. God bless you all, and as always, keep the faith.